everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fishing Reports. Thanks for watching. We're getting ready to go out with Austin Moser of Austin's Northwest Adventures. We're chasing sockeye on the Upper Columbia in the city of Wenatchee and Central Washington. Keep watching, it's gonna be a fun show. It's been pretty good down here. Yeah, we've been doing really good. Uh, we're down here below Rocky Reach Dam, and and you know I, I, this is my home waters. My house is right here, but uh, you know all these other dams are so blowed out. The Okanagan River is too cold, so the fish aren't stacking at Brewster. So we're making do with what we got, and there's a lot of fish around. We're gonna have a good time here. Awesome. So year after year, this is a viable fishery. You know, this, this is a viable fishery um, all the way up and down. Almost all the dams, uh, the fish will stack up underneath. Okay. This is a small area, so sure. it could be a little crowded. Um, there's other spots that are probably better, but the way the water conditions are, this is about our best option right now. Sure, and it's fun because I haven't really fished this a lot. Yeah. Um, some different stuff you're going to show us on how to dial in Rocky Reach, right? Yep, there you go. Maybe we should go fishing one. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is a pretty typical uh, sockeye setup that we're using on the Columbia River um, for guys who are not running downriggers. Uh, downrigger guys do really well, but for me, I'm able to put more rods out and every customer can have their own rod. We can reel them up, check them pretty easily. I have a lot of presentations in the water at one time, so we always have bait on some rod. You know, that becomes a factor. You get bit and you don't even know it. And uh, we have bait on every rod and uh, I like these uh, double lot dodgers I think this is a double lot and um, and then I use a uh, Dutch fork little uh, Dutch fork uh, butterfly wing on there smile blades work I mean anything with just a little bit of flash kind of gets them going I like a little treble on there and we're able to fish barbs this year so I'm swapping out some gear right now so that we can uh, show off these barbed hooks I really like these Maruto hooks uh, these are by Angler Innovation and uh, good stuff. Um, on the upper end of this, I have a 14 inch bumper. It might be 16 on this one and to a slider. So the slider is so when the fish hits it, it can pull line and it doesn't feel the weight as much. And also when you get hung up in the net, you have a little bit of time to try to get the weight out of the net if you don't have the fish in it. Um, that's a big factor in Chinook fishing as well. Um, so. We're gonna fish with uh, six ounce leads today and five ounce in the middle and four ounce in the back. And we're gonna stagger our bait depths depending on where I'm marking fish and um, sockeye are pretty much on the surface. So you can guarantee we're gonna be in the top 15 feet of the water column. So six ounce lead, slider, terminal tackle, dodger, large dodger I like to uh, some hooks here. And then I got some raised bait uh, some raised bait coon shrimp that we put on there and you guys will see that when I bait them up here in just a few minutes. So here we go. So what are these baits Austin? This is a coon shrimp on a hook here and I put this treble hook right between his eyes like that. And that fish grabs that, he is hooked. Off. 
We need. Got a bat somewhere. Do we need bait? Oh, oh. There you go. Yep. Well, two out of three on that one. Yeah, that's not bad. You still got some lines in the water, Josh. Yeah, I know. You don't want to grab these things because they'll swing those hooks into your hand. Until you bonk them. Okay. We got anything in the water? We do. Three. Three insta. Woo! <laughs> got your first salmon, huh? Man, yeah, first one ever. Call that a double, boys. <laughs> that came around the turn there. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we got him on the turn. So what happened? There's fish. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. No, nope, maybe he's got it. Try it, Dane. Grab it, Dane. Lift it up. I can't See if tell. it's there. Is there a fish there? No, nope. no fish. Wow. <laughs> little bitey. Yeah. <laughs> so started out with almost a quad. <laughs> uh, so we, so we take that turn. The baits slow down. They sink. One's speeding up. One's sinking. And uh, it's it's similar to kokanee fishing. It's a lot like kokanee fishing on a large scale. And uh, they are kokanee, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Or kokanee or them, I should say. So, uh, but yeah, nice fish. Good Delicious. looking. Yeah. Delicious. Cromers. Do you want to take right. some pictures, Bruce? Yeah, you bet. Go ahead. One finger, front finger, right there. Lift, <laughs> Rob. Oh, I missed. Can you see him? I got him. Right. Lift. Okay, duel. Oh, there we go. Duels. Pick him up. Just, just slip it off. Slip it off. Slip it off. Two in the net. Nice job, Austin. Okay, Holy cow, that. that was all. I don't think we have anything left in the water. We got one. Woo! Really? Oh, fish, fish. Fish on left back. Fish. That's a good one. Fish on the other rod, right behind you. Oh, oh, Get him, right here. Get him. Right here. Ryan, grab this rod. Grab this rod. Grab this rod. Okay, bring him up this way, Bruce. Oh, he's yeah. off. So, so, Austin, this year, we've got a really good sockeye return. Yeah. Where are all these fish going? You know, a lot of these fish are going up to Osuius Lake in Canada. Okay. So they're headed to Brewster, they're going to go up the Okanagan River, and then they're going to go into the lake. Now, a certain portion of them are going up the Wenatchee River, which is behind us, sure. to go to Lake Wenatchee. So that season will probably open in August if they get enough fish. Um, right. But, but they're anticipating a season there. So. Okay. Um, so there's a couple different sockeye opportunities, but a lot of this upper run is on its way to Canada. It is, yep. And they're gonna ball up in the uh, Brewster pool. That's kind of what happens. They get a thermal barrier when that river gets too hot and those fish won't go up into Canada until we get some rain. And then all of a sudden it's a ghost town. Sure, they all head up. Yep. Sorry, sorry. All good. Yeah, I got one here. Okay, lift, slowly lift. Give it some slack. What do you think, Josh? Give some slack oh, and hand me your rod. Yeah, slack. Thank you. Woo! I love this. Love it. Do it all day. Well, you're tagged out. That's your limit. I am. That's the last one for me. Yeah, sorry. But. Woo! Dang. That's that it. went quick. Yeah. Going on, oh, man. Ryan. Too much fun, man. Too much fun. So many fish. A little bit chaotic out here, but it's awesome. So do that guy. It's good. It's good.
bonked it. Uh, I haven't bonked it yet. Yeah, we so. need to do that before you touch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll get hooked. Yeah. Then you're going to lift once you get him up. Okay, it's going to lift. Okay, just slowly lift. Oh, in and out, in and out. Sorry. Let me hit this boat. Lift up. Bring him up the side of the boat. Up the side of the boat. <laughs> Your drag must be really loose. Keep him out of that motor. <laughs> Yes. So we've seen a, 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 a wide range of sizes. We got some big ones and some smaller sockeye. Yeah. Uh, what's the typical average of the sockeye that are on this run? You know, I'm calling it three to six pounds. I haven't really weighed them, but I'm going to say they're close to that. You know, that that type type of range. You know. 18 to 25 inches, maybe 24 inches. Sure. Um, we're not getting a lot of really big ones, but we're getting some really nice ones. You yeah. Know? Oh, they're all bright. Oh, yeah. Great looking fish. Oh, that's fish on. Here. 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 Awesome. That's your fish to catch, buddy. Oh, yeah. I forgot. This one's mine. Ryan, who's going to net him? You've seen it right here. The guide, Austin Moser, actually catching one of his own fish. Whoa. Ooh, There's no pressure, Austin. It'd be really embarrassing if you don't land this fish. Hey, come on. <laughs> no pressure, buddy. I'm sure you can do it. Well, I'm driving, too. He puts a lot, well, that's true. You're very talented. You put a lot of guys on fish. How often do you get to catch him? Not very often. He's all wrapped up in it. All right, I'm going to bring him over here to the side. Are you ready? Put that hat in the water. Six feet back. As far as you can reach. There you go. Fish on oh, the other rock. Right there. Oh, I got him. Got him. Now, huh? that's a pretty good double. Oh, it came off. By the same dude. Oh, that, was, that was gold. That was gold. <laughs> came Please. off. What do you do? <laughs> this one's barbless because we broke our other feeder. Pretty good. You almost had a back to back double. That's, there, close. Right? that's, close. So, that's a typical sockeye here in the Columbia River. Uh, we were just talking about sizes and things. That's that's a pretty nice fish. Hey, one on me. Yeah, that's a pretty nice fish. So are you gonna go for your next, your one more fish, and then we're done, huh? Yeah, one more fish, and we're done. We might put some uh, chinook rods out, see if okay. we can come up with a chinook. And you want to fish a little longer since we're out? This went yeah. pretty quick, you know. Yeah, it's a, I don't got my next trip until like four o'clock, so I need to wrap it up about three. But we got a little bit of time. We can try to get some chinook in. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Let's keep going. Here we go. <laughs> Two passes, we got seven fish. Going on our third pass. We've been here 45 minutes? Maybe. Maybe, maybe 45 maybe. minutes. It's gonna make for a quick show, folks, but keep watching, we got more stuff coming up. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Joanne and I had a great outing. We brought home 20 beautiful kokanee. They are on the small size, they're running around 10 inches, but they will smoke up just great, make some wonderful kokanee candy. And I think it's important to mention again, kokanee are very fragile. So if you catch a kokanee, the odds are pretty good. They may well not survive. So my feeling is catch them, keep them, don't waste the resource. Don't throw them back and they'll end up being eagle food. Couple things, start off with a good knife. I've got a big eddy here, which I like a lot for filleting. And I run this through a work sharp tool sharpener to get a good edge on it before I start. So let's take a look here. Here's our little 10 inch kokanee. I'm gonna cut right behind the gill plate and I'm gonna slide my knife along the backbone and the rib cage. And just like that, there is a nice little fillet. Give this a little rinse. And into my brine she goes. Flip this fish over, 
Again, cut along the back, slide that knife along, keep it right up against the backbone. I like to take the little pin bones up off. So let's clean this up, this fillet up a little bit. There's a little bit of slime there. We're gonna just cut that out entirely. Cut that off the end here. And again, there you go. Nice little fillet. Put that in the brine. Let's bring out another fish and do it again here. So again, what you want to do is make that nice cut behind the gill plate and slide your knife right along the backbone and the rib cage. That'll give you a beautiful fillet. Doesn't matter whether it's a 10 inch fish or a 20 inch fish, you're still going to get a great fillet. You can see how close to the backbone I was with that guy right there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But, so check this out. Getting a nice little pile of fillets. I gotta say, I love smoked kokanee. It's one of my favorite treats to eat. My friends and family love it as well. So I hope that helped you guys out a little bit and we'll see you on the water. What are you doing, Ryan? Leading fish. Check them all out. Got quite a few. Nice sockeye. Leading some fish. So why are you bleeding them? Makes the uh, make the meat taste a lot better. Get all the blood out. Much easier when you clean them up too. One point I'd like to make while we're looking for Austin's last fish is there's always a chance for a Chinook to come up and grab what we're fishing, right? Yeah, definitely. We catch Chinook as bycatch while we're fishing for the sockeye. And especially in Brewster, those guys, they actually target the Chinook with the sockeye gear. So you never know when you're going to get the big one on the line, that's for sure. So we're kind of looking, before we switch over, we're, we still got a good chance for a Chinook. And we may switch over a little bit here and uh, just make a couple changes to the gear and the offering um, to target those. There it is. Sorry. <laughs> Woo yeah. Nice job. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the last fish, Austin? Oh, I had him out of the net. Now he's in it. Is that the last one? I need one. I don't know. Do it. I think I need one more. Right? Okay. So we got one more. Hey. Never mind. I don't know. Oh, there it is. There it is. Is that going to be the last one, Austin? I got the net. <laughs> Rob Holman, yeah. awesome! <laughs> On the Good net, job, buddy. one handed. Nice. Hey Austin, if guys want to do this trip with you, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, so we got another fish on that rod. Uh, but yeah, so to get a hold of me, you can go to my website, www.austinsnorthwestadventures.com. You can call me anytime, 509-668-0298. Get out here and have some of this fun. What a great day we had. I'm yeah, it was, a, it was a blast. Everybody get out here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The environment. All right, guys, so we had a great day. What a great day that was for sockeye fishing. We put in the first pass, we got four fish, lost two. So six six fish on, very first pass. And you know, it just, it stayed about like that the whole time until we got our limits. So here's a great, this is a great example of a Columbia River sockeye. You're gonna see the flesh in this thing when I cut it open. These things are awesome. I'd say this is a four pounder maybe. 
maybe four and a half, four and a quarter ish. Uh, but nice fish, good eating fish. They're in great shape up here. So let's get to it. I'll take the fins off real quick. Take the head off. We don't need that. Got rid of the collars, cut them out. Don't leave much in the head that way. Get rid of that. Split the gut. This one was a male. Just had a little bit of white eggs there. Here's that. Very important to uh, keep your fish on ice. They really, they fillet so much better. They're not mushy. And, uh, you know, you spent a lot of time and money to get these fish, so it's nice to take care of them really well. So I'm a big proponent of lots of ice in the boat when you have quality fish to keep cold. So I go in here and I'll take all the bones out. Just like that. A good sharp knife is a great thing to have as well. I'm sure you could go down there to the old general store and pick out a really nice sharp knife for doing this. But look at that, that's Columbia River sockeye filet. You don't get much better than that. One more time. One more time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, you guys ought to have a your face on the camera. I just want you to know that. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to talk very really good. You know. I could try. How's it going? Oh, you know, another day. <laughs> <laughs>